This is 10 Questions for Time.com. I'm Tim Morrison, and we're here at the home of best-selling author James Patterson. Thank you for having us. Don't make me sorry for having invited you. <laughs> you have 180 million books uh, sold. All, all right um, in the house here somewhere. All right in the house here. The newest, Private, is out in June. Uh, you have three more due in the rest of the summer. Something like that. Uh, yeah. Something like that. Uh, this leads us to our first question from a reader. It's Marlene Jones in Amesbury, Massachusetts. What's the largest number of books that you've actively worked on simultaneously? In my office in Florida, I have, I think, 30 manuscript piles around the room, so around 30. So, so some, some screenplays, and we have comic books and graphic novels. There's a lot of things that I do now. And you're working on all of them? Well, the I, they're all going at a, at a, at a given time. Uh, and, and sometimes they can span two or three years of, some are in outline form, some are almost done, some I'm, I'm, I'm rewriting. Constance Smith in Anaheim, California writes, uh, as an African American, I'm real impressed on how well you write Alex Cross and his family. Uh, how did you develop these characters? Uh, how did you research them? My grandparents had a small restaurant and there was a, 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 an African American woman who was the cook there. And she was having problems with her husband and so she just moved into our house for a couple of years. I was a little kid. And she and, got, and I got incredibly close, and I spent tons of time with her family. And her family was, they were a really wonderful family. The cooking was great, the music was great, they were very, the humor was great, the values were terrific. And, and I always kept that family in the back of my head, and, 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 and in some sense, the aura of that household um, um, is part of what, what drove me to, to, to create the Cross family. So it's not just Alex, it's his, it's his family. And I'm constantly being warned, you know, grandmother must not die, she must live to be 105, take care of the kids, the cat must be okay. I mean, you know, people get attached to, to not just Alex, but his family and his friends, even Samson. Why did you make the decision to start uh, writing Young Adult Lit? I, I have a 12-year-old, uh, and that's a piece of it. So I'm, I've really been watching his development as a reader. First of all, in this country, we have millions of kids who have never read a book that they liked. Uh, they just have never, millions. And I think that the best way to get not all kids, but most kids are reading is give them books they're going to love, and, and, and then they'll read more. What we did with Jack was when Jack was eight, he was a good reader, but he, but he wasn't really involved in it. And we said, this summer, you're going to read every day. You don't have to cut the lawn, but you do have to read every day for you know, half an hour, hour, whatever. And the first summer it was, do I have to? But by the end of the summer, he had read, and we said, we're going to go out and get you some cool books. So we got the Percy Jacksons and Warriors and Wrinkle in Time and, you know, whatever. And by the end of the summer, he had read half a dozen books that he really liked. And he was a better reader. The second summer, no problem. He read like a maniac. When he was nine, he read To Kill a Mockingbird. He read like a dozen books, and he loved them. And his reading ability is, you know, quintupled. You know, I have this readkiddoread.com, which is a site which really is just trying to assist parents, teachers, grandparents, whatever. Here's a, here, here are a couple hundred books that, that I think and, and, and the people who are also involved in the site think will turn your kids on. Well, uh, just to focus again on your, uh, on your thrillers, uh, we had many questions from readers uh, asking how you write bad guys. Where do you get research your villains to, uh, to find out so much about them? One, there's, there's a lot of information available on, on bad guys. I've talked to, at this stage, a, just a ton of policemen and FBI people and CIA, et cetera. So there are lots of people to talk to. And people are very willing to talk to you about you know, their experiences. And I've talked to people who have spent a lot of time with Son of Sam, you know, whatever. So, so there's a lot of information available. But I think the key and what I always try to do is to write them as human beings. Um, and I think that always separates, and I don't always succeed, but that's what I try to do, you know. And, and, and I think that the good villains are, 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 are kind of complex and you recognize something about them. And I think the more identifications you make, uh, in some ways, the more satisfying it is. Donna Keeney in Nashville, Tennessee, wants to know, uh, what character out of all of your books would you say is most like yourself? Probably Alex. Probably Alex Cross. Yeah, I, I think Alex is, is a similar temperament, um, you know, kind of a thoughtful guy, tries to do the right thing within reason. 
Uh, was that uh, something you thought of consciously while you were no. writing and creating this character? No, I just think that a, a lot of me has spilled over into Alex. All right. Thanks so much again. That's been a delight.